Hi everyone, Emma here. I am so excited to show you the completed version of this bracelet. So I did a little sneak preview and I kind of left it up in the air where I said um, it was a preview and that I would show it later. I was pretty sure I wasn't going to be able to do it on Sunday, but today's Tuesday. This is complete. I have a bunch of other bracelets that are complete for other videos and for a giveaway. So, um, yeah, I, I appreciate everyone being patient for this. So what I'm going to do for this one, this is the Mickey. That one's Mickey and that one's Minnie. Let's enlarge it a bit here and adjust. Make sure it's in focus. So Mickey and Minnie. And the idea behind this bracelet. So actually, I should have brought this up. This is from, I think it, her name is Sidhu. And let me see if I can bring it up while I talk to you. Um, so I think Sidhu is in uh, India. And she does a bunch of different bracelets. Really cool design. So definitely check her channel out. I will put the link in the description for her channel. And uh, so the idea was my sister is heading to Disney for a vacation and uh, she wanted to make a bracelet, a Disney bracelet. And I can't remember if she asked me if I had any designs or anything. But anyway, she showed me, um, she sent me the link to Sid who's uh, video and um, she said she was a little bit confused and my sister's a new beater so that's probably why but also um, when you get videos from other um, okay I found it oh I don't know why I was calling it Sidhu her name is Nidhi Serana so um, yeah I'll put the link anyway um, it was a little bit different so what I did was I went ahead and I changed things and then I I did that preview video so that was this is the explanation I apologize a bit long um, the video was meant as something I was going to record for her and email it and of course it was too big for the email so I was like posting it and I'm like I might as well post it to everybody so I got some responses that was good so let's get started so you're going to need now like a lot of bracelets that I do, the different sizes are variable and definitely the colors are variable. So I think for Mickey and Minnie, you definitely need black, but you know there's so many different color black. And actually, you don't even have to have black now that I say that because, I mean, it definitely tells you that that's Mickey and Minnie, but um, I've seen images of Mickey and Minnie with different color ears as well. So anyway, getting distracted here. So you need some six millimeter black beads and you'll need twice as many as the larger size bead. These are, I think they're 10 millimeter. Let me check here. So this is quite different than her design. I think her design, she asks you to use 8 mil. Actually, this looks like 8 mil now. Yeah, actually, these are 8. Maybe she asked for 10s. I don't know. Okay, and then you're going to need some... I have the package for this. Make sure I give you the right size. Yeah, these are 11.0 red and then 11.0... I used gold. She used like a transparent color, like a whitish transparent color. Um, I wanted to bling it up a bit so that it's a little more substantial. And I also changed the attachment. So she uses four beads and makes a little square for the attachment. I made the diamond shape. I love that diamond shape. And actually, I have some videos coming out to show you um, some designs with the diamond shapes. So um, let's move this. I am also using size six. I'm going to use gray today, but I normally when I use gold, 
I use the green thread, but they've been out of the green thread. And actually, you know what? Now that I look at this, this is white thread. So you can you can't see the thread in this, so you can use any color thread. So we start out with I do a wing span. You're gonna need multiple uh, pieces of thread for this. So let's move our buddies up here like that. You're gonna start pick up five gold beads, eleven O's. So when you're doing diamond shape, actually no, start with four. I For a while there I was starting with five, but you can start with four. So I'll show it to you with four and then it's consistent throughout. You always pick up four when you're doing your diamond. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to take it down near to the bottom and let me bring this about there so that my hands, my hands are big. Oh. Bring it, leave yourself enough of a tail to tie a knot. So for some people that's smaller. For me, I always want to go small because I don't want to waste thread, but I end up, <laughs> I don't have anything to hang on. So you tie that in a knot and then put a second knot. I put three. I just had too many times of beading and the, the beginning piece ended up coming apart. So I always do three. You really don't need three. The dogs are all out right now. I don't know if you can hear that. Probably not. But oh. We have um, two service dogs on the street. And um, we also have a hound dog that can't deal with other if there's another person or another dog he starts he or she starts barking and like a hound dog like a howl it's and it's pretty intense so sorry about that i went through the first bead i'm hanging on to the thread you can cut the thread off but it actually is a good way to hang on to things so now we're going to go through and we're going to add one eleven o between each of these spaces in the gold beads so pick up an 11 0 gold like that go through and I've done some videos with different designs using this diamond pattern um, the one that I did it with is this the ring one so if you're if you really want some like more instruction go to that one um, not that I'm not giving you the instruction on this, I am, and we'll be doing a few of these, but um, that one, it's just straight diamonds. So pick up another 11 -0 gold, go through the next one. Like that. Pick up another, go through. See if I can hold on to this for you. The threads caught on my sleeve. It's cold here. We are expecting to get hit by Fiona. I'm shocked. Well, I mean, I shouldn't be. I think what it is is like we got hit. Um, Sixteen years ago, pretty bad by Hurricane Juan, the city was, well, we were out of power for, I don't know if it was weeks or I can't remember now. I got my power pretty quick. So I'm having problems getting through because the knot is kind of slid into the bead. I'm going to see if I can pull it out a bit. So be careful when you put your knot because, yeah, that doesn't want to go through. Let me see if I can pull that out. Or maybe I can pull it through. Um, yeah, I, my wife and I weren't together when Juan 
can't do there I got the knot out so I try and keep the knot out once we go through you're not going to see it so you don't have to worry but it will definitely clog your bead these are kind of small beads and the threads a bit big yeah the um, the hurricane well they were like doing feeding stations and all through the city like you could go and get sandwiches and stuff it was really bad and we have a lot of like 100 plus trees all through the city we have a park that that's all it is is trees that are that old and older we actually ended up they found um, the oldest tree in the world here in Nova Scotia just over the summer Okay, so there's your diamond. I'm going to go through the next to come out this point just to stay away from that knot. Now, when I start this bracelet, I actually do two of these. Let me show you. But you can do as many as you want. Just because you don't want your class to be like snug up to the actual pearls. So I did two for that. So maybe maybe I will do a second one here just to show you what it's like to add one to this. So now we're going to add four beads. We're coming out of this side. We're going to go into the other side. So let me pick up four. So there's four. So yeah, I'm trying to think of what else I can tell you about Hurricane Juan here. It was... Like, I, I guess it's been long enough now that I'm forgetting a lot of stuff, but it was huge. It, it was um, pretty unbelievable that that could happen. So now, we're, so now what I did, and I apologize, I didn't tell you. So we added the four beads to this point bead, and then I went through the first. So whenever you're doing a chain like this, always go through the first one. And if you can picture what this one, this diamond looks like, and think that this is going to be a diamond, you can look and see there's a bead missing here, there's a bead missing here, and there's a bead missing here. And then it would create the diamond. So you definitely have to go through the first one is what I'm getting at. So pick up one. And go through the next bead. Put that through. Like that. Then pick up another. Go through the next one. Like that. And then one more. So we're coming out of that side. We're going to go into the next bead. You can see it's a bit loose, but that'll tighten up. And these are, for the colors, I apologize, I didn't tell you the colors. So these are inexpensive, uh, like the dollar strand beads that I got. They were a little more than a dollar, but that I got from uh, Butterfly Beads. And I think this is cream, that color. This is their black pearl. It is not a black pearl. <laughs> So, you know, the funny thing is I was really disappointed when I got them. I was like, you know, that's not a pearl. That's a black bead. It's matte a whole bit. But you know what? I've actually used them so much. Um, the red is called dark red opaque. And the these gold, uh, that's why I wanted to tell you, these are the ones I just got from Shipwreck Beads, and they are the metallic champagne rokai. They're lovely. Now, I do have to say that when you're using them, you do notice some of them are a bit translucent. You can kind of see, but you know what? When you look at it in a design, you don't really see any of the inconsistencies of it. Um, the other thing is... Now this one was really good. One of the other ones I used, like a, it was a copper. I had some big ones and small ones, but not a lot.
but just so you know they're not like the the most expensive beads out there okay so now we need to get to this tip here so we're going to go through the beads and over so we're going to go through this joining one here I, I wondered if it was going to do this. So you have to be careful it gets hooked on your work because it's so tiny at this point. There, went through that first one. Okay, so now we're just going to go through a couple at a time in a straight angle like that. And I apologize, I'm off to the side because the camera's in the way. So I tend to go around the camera. It's like, oh, I've been doing this long enough. I should be good at this, but... And once in a while, you get distracted. Okay, let's add our Mickey and Minnie. So we're going to take a pearl. Let's add a pearl. Let's get those guys there. Then we are going to take... Pick up two gold beads then a black bead then two gold beads and then a black bead and then one gold bead i think i got this right so that's what you need to create your mickey mini pull it all down to your diamond Okay, so if you think of it, you want the ears here. This is right angle weave, so you're going to weave back down through this bead here on the diamond. So go through the diamond. Pull everything down. And then go through the pearl. And as you go and you do this, you will it'll start to tighten. So every time you go through, try and tighten it so that it stays. So now we're going to go through. I'm trying to think, did I go through both? Yeah, we went through both. So go through both of those. I apologize for this. It's what happens when it's a new design. Pull it tight. And then we're going to go through the two. So this is optional too. I found if you're using Toho beads, you only need one. I found that with these Rokai's, they're smaller than the Toho's, that it look, you could see the thread and it looked like it was missing something. So I added the two and it seems to work okay. So then go through those two and through the black bead. We're going to come back around and tightening each time like that. So now go through these two here. And you can go through the pearl at the same time. Straighten that out, pull it tight, and there's your first one. So now we're going to add a diamond shape, and then we're going to do mini. So let's go through this first 11 -0. And pull it tight, like that. Just going to set it down. We're going to pick up four 11 -0 gold. That. So we're coming out of the top of that bead. We're going to go down through the bottom of it. Like this. OK. 
Okay, so I just flipped it. It makes it easier to work from this side. So these are the four that I added, these here. So like I said, you always go through that first one. It also snugs it up, so it's good. Like that. And now we're going to create our diamond. So pick up an 11-0. Coming out of here, we're going to go into this next one. And I tend to hold on to it. I'll try not to so you can see it pop into place. Pick up another 11-0 gold. Go through just one bead, the next one. So you're coming out of this one here. You're going to go into this one. Now we need one more here. So we're coming out of here. We're going to go into this one here. And you can go through the two at the same time because we're going to bring our thread around to this end one here. So let's go through those two. And if you can't get it through the two, just go through the one. That's fine. You know what I find funny? <laughs> and I hear other beaters say this too, is we take shortcuts all the time. Like we'll pass through multiple beads at once when we could really do one bead at a time. But we love doing the beading, yet we love shortening the process. <laughs> There's Mickey! I had a corgi, like the queen, and that's why I got this corgi, because the queen had one, so I had to have one, because I'm a princess, and uh, I named him Mickey, because I actually his full name was Mickey Mouse DeVoe, <laughs> because he had the massive ears like a Mickey Mouse, so it was so funny, when he was good, I called him Mouse. Like, oh, my little mouse, like this. And when he was bad, I'm like, Mickey. <laughs> so grab your pearl. So this is, we're going to start sliding things on here. A pearl, two gold beads, 11 O's. A black, I was going to take those ones. A black bead, two 11 O gold. A black bead. In one gold. Like that. Slide those down. So now I'm going to tell you a little thing I want you so that you're not um, confused. Sometimes if you're flipping, depending on which way you go through these and come out, you will end up like wanting to turn it this way and then your thing's upside down. So I've had that happen to me, and I don't know what I did if I was just going through it a different way. If you're, say, I, this thread was coming out the top, then you would think you would come down to the bottom. Don't bother. Always go through the top like this. And even if this first thread is in the wrong position, go through your bead and come through. It'll straighten out. But you definitely want the ears on top. <laughs> you don't want your... Mickey and Minnie to be upside down so go through pull that together and I it's probably information you didn't need to know like to be confused <laughs> but so this one here we are going to embellish with the bow but before we do this because this is right angle weave I find right angle weave I need to go through it twice otherwise it gets loose and it looks sloppy but that's up to you. Some people will go back afterwards and go through everything. Um, and some people don't at all. So it's up to you. But I'm going to go through this one more time. And then we'll add the bow. So go through your two 11 O's and your black bead. And make sure everything's snug. Here's another tip with right angle weave. And I think this was Tammy that told me this tip. Because I was getting so frustrated that it was loose all the time. And she was saying to pull your thread in the direction you're going. So rather than pull it up this way, you see how the thread gets exposed. Pull it down the way you want to go. 
and that will tighten it nicely. So let's go through these two 11 O's and the pearl. Actually, yeah, let's do that. I was going to say we could start putting the bow on, but I want to secure this a little better. I'll take a look at what I did on the last few. By the I, like in the design, by the time I got to the end, I totally perfected the bow. So, so let me let's take a look at the bow. So this is the bow we want to recreate here. When I started, this is what the bows looked like, and that was the design in uh, Nidhi's uh, video, which it still looks cute. And actually, I used four beads. She used only three, but it definitely wasn't big enough for the size. But then I got to um, to this section here and did just that one little red one at the bottom and then the rest gold. And this is an option you can do as well. Then I got to this point and I was like, let me put all three at the bottom red. And that works well. And then I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> so this makes the bow look bigger. And then it really outlines the little knot in the bow. It's so like intricate. You might not notice, but there you go. That's how I ended up with. So let me um, just see. Yeah, I came around again here. So let's do that. Let's put that there so I can look at it. So let's go through the pearl. There. Yeah, I'm trying to think uh, with Mickey Mouse, the corgi. So I got the corgi from a friend at work, the social worker on the psychiatric floor that I worked on. And um, he, they bred corgis and um, they also had horses. So they kept the horses. So I'm going to go through both, I think I did. Let me check where. No, only go through the one. That's why I wanted to check. Let's go through the one. See, beat. So they used to keep the corgi puppies in the horse stables. So they weren't trained, like potty trained, <laughs> outdoor trained. <laughs> so when I, and he never told me that. It's like, you're trying to get rid of these dogs, right? Like, who does that? <laughs> yeah, we got these great dogs. You can have them. <laughs> Good thing I didn't get two. Okay, so you only need to add two gold, a red, a gold, a red, and two gold. And I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so that's what you want to pick up. Two gold, one red, one gold, one red, two gold. Okay, bring that down. that and you're gonna go through that second bead here like up through here and we're gonna go through all those beads again come out the other side like that so yeah that was and he was um he was more than six months old so that's the other problem when you have, you know, still call them puppies, but when they're that old and they've not been trained yet, it's really hard to train them. Okay, so now we're going to go through the beads at the front and we're going to create our bows. So let's go. Up through the two gold and the one red. Like that. Pick up four red beads. 
that. We're going to come back around onto that red bead like that. And it should form a bow. Flips up. Okay, now we're going to go through the gold bead and the red bead. We're going to do the same again. Pick up four red beads, like that, and we're going to loop around that red bead that we just came through, like that. And then we're going to go through the gold beads. It seems loose. Let me um, see if we. You know what? I was missing a gold bead on each side. Let's see if we can fix. So we're going to go through these two gold beads. And then we're going to go through this bottom bead here and pull everything tight. There, that looks a little better. And you can kind of wiggle your definitely would have been better with the extra bead but we'll do it on the next one next up so let's get four gold beads to do our diamond oops that's five so we're coming out of the bottom of that first bead we're going to go through the top of it like that we're going to pass through the first bead and we're going to complete our diamond so go through each bead by adding one Pick up another 11 0, go through the next bead. Go through the next, and I'm going to pass through the other bead as well if I can get through it. Like that. So there's our diamond. So now we're going to go through the side so we can end up here. There. Go through those two. And go through these two. Like that. Okay, we're going to pick up. Now I'm, I'm not going to use this one. You can use it, but I'm realizing how crappy these beads are. <laughs> okay, so we're so this is what how I was saying I'm coming up from the top. This thread is coming up from the top and it should be coming from the bottom. But I'll show you how you just power through it, so pick up two 11 0 gold. Let me keep this so you can see what I have. A black bead. Two golds. Another black bead. And one gold. Let me bring that down and I'll show you. So that's what you want. Okay. So you see how this is coming out to the top. Normally you would go to the bottom to attach it, but we always want the ears to be on top. 
So we're going to go through from the top, pull that through, and you can see it doesn't really make that much of a difference. So let's go through the pearl, go through everything one more time. Go through the all the beads in that circle. You know, this is really exciting doing these this design so this was a design that my sister was interested in i probably never would have thought of doing it but what it made me realize is you know maybe i should do a right angle weave series because once you figure out how to do right angle weave you can do some incredible designs by changing the colors of the beads the size of the beads what you put as your little beads in between and it's pretty awesome it's an amazing one of my favorite weaves so now we're going to go through that first gold bead and we're going to add our triangle or our diamond and i'll just go ahead and do that as i'm talking so i was talking about <laughs> the corgi and uh I was just telling my wife the other day about this corgi. So we had harness for the corgi when he was in the car. And he went through so many of those harnesses because he would be latched into the back seat with the harness. He wore a harness anyway because you see the way the corgis are. Like they don't do well with, well... My dog was so excitable that he didn't do well with a, a like a collar. It would choke him. He'd pull on it and stuff. So he did better with a harness, like a full body harness. But of course, that worked out great for like the um. What have I done here? No, I'm good. It just didn't sit right first time. So um. You know, you latch that into the seat belt, holds them in if there's a car accident. And he was so hyper, he needed to be, <laughs> he needed a straight jacket is what he needed. Oh my God, I kept saying, what the hell have I done? Why did I get this dog? I can totally see why the queen liked corgis. They are little clowns and they're so smart. Like, unbelievably smart. They used to be used for, um, um, they used to be used for herding dogs. So, I apologize, the phone's ringing. My secretary's gone. <laughs> Don't tell Jen I said that. <laughs> She'd be like, oh, I'm your secretary now. So pick up a pearl. Two gold. A black one. Two gold. Black one. And a gold. So we had him in the harness in the car he went through so many of them like within minutes you you attach him into the car and then like you turn around and look and he had the whole harness chewed off <laughs> i'm gonna kill this dog <laughs> so <laughs> the car we had we're in north carolina the car we had didn't have air conditioning <laughs> So, and the, there was him and another dog, and the dogs go everywhere with us. So, he had to be tied in, because, like, he'd jump out the window as we're driving. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, it was nutty. So, a story I was telling Jen, and I thought it was funny that I hadn't told her that before, or she was being polite, <laughs> probably being polite. So, um, this is my second time around, I think. 
I'm just going to go through again. So um, the other dog we had was a really old dog and um, one of her teeth fell out and she was bleeding. So I called the vet and the vet said, you know, bring her in, but we can't do surgery today because she's already eaten and stuff, but bring her in. This was the older dog. And um, so I, stupid me, I brought, I just thought of it now. Why did I do this? <laughs> I brought the other dog with me in a car that's not air conditioned with a chewed up harness. <laughs> so anyway, um, I he was latched in now that I think of it. But anyway, I'm in the vet's office and like it's a big window glass window you can see inside the vet's office from the car and i'm talking to the the uh the assistant and stuff and um how did i do this okay yeah one more time here the dog was barking mickey was barking so much that like we could barely hear each other talk and I'm like oh my god I got the other dog in the car she's like that's okay <laughs> so barking 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 all of a sudden it's quiet right I'm thinking great finally settled down right <laughs> I get everything taken care of with the other dog Dusty and they take her in and everything and I go to the car I come outside the car is gone I'm like I don't know if you've ever had that happen to you where you go where you thought you parked the car and you realize you don't have the car. The car's not there. You're like, oh my God, my car was stolen, right? <laughs> and I'm like freaking out. So, of course, I'm scanning and then I realize he had jumped up and down so many times and it was a standard car so it was in neutral and it had the emergency brake. Now, I should have put it in first so that it wouldn't move but <laughs> so he jumped up and jumped up and I guess there was like a little button at the emergency brake so it's like a big lever and then there's a button here you have to release the button before you can let push it down he must have got in between that button push the button and and jump down on the on the lever for the emergency brake and the car rolled Thank goodness there was a massive old tree right like behind where I had parked. So the car rolled and hit the tree and stopped because the street was a four lane main street. Like I can't even imagine what would have happened. <laughs> he was like, or like dead, big, big eyes <laughs> and like, like so scared. I'm thinking to myself, I'm not telling a soul that this ever happened. I never told my ex-husband that that happened. He would have freaked out on me, right? So I'm like, I'm not telling anybody. Meanwhile, I'm telling all of you guys. This is my secrets. Okay, so we're going to put her bow. We're going to do this properly this time. I apologize. The first one had only two beads to begin with. It should have had three. So... So think of it three, three, and three. So three gold, a red, a gold, and a red. That's your second three. And then three gold. Like that. So then pull that down. That's better. And we're going to go. Go up through the second bead there and then go up and around everything and that will keep it nice and tight like that. He was so bossy he had to be in charge all the time. So when our poor Dusty passed away we got another puppy and it was a black lab a German short hair pointer mix. Oh my gosh, he was so beautiful. And he was the sweetest dog you ever 
met. He was just adorable. Well, they're big. And corgis are small. So we'd go to walk the dogs. We'd hand Mickey the leash to the other dog, Buddy. And Mickey would walk his big brother. <laughs> oh, people would crack up when they'd see them. They were so funny. And he would like, he would pull the leash like, no, you're going too far. <laughs> okay, so let's go through. Um, I'm going to try this the way she does it. So go through the first three gold. I, I went through the red there as well and go through the red, the gold and the red. And I'll just tell you, just cause I felt like this one didn't sit the way I wanted it to. So if you go through them all like that, now add your four red beads for the first part. And what she does, she comes out of that one adds the beads and goes through the same one. So now pass through the gold and the red. And I'm just going to tighten that a bit. See if that makes a difference in how it sits. So you need to um, just kind of adjust those beads so they turn. Yeah, so that did make a difference on the way it they sit. So they sit up a little better. Okay, so we're going to pick up four. And, you know, I don't mean to apologize, but if you're wondering why, you know, I'm doing a tutorial and I'm, it feels like I'm making stuff up as I go, I am. <laughs> and if that's not what you like, move on to, like, I can refer you to some really amazing beaters on YouTube. This like I'm learning too. So I started beading when the pandemic started. And um, so these are things that I'm learning. So if there's designs you want to see and you think might be a challenge, I would totally love it to do it. And if I use your idea or your suggestion, I will definitely send you something. So that's it. So I'm gonna, yeah, this looks a lot better that way. There's the other one. Looks kind of funny. Kind of funny looking, eh? So then you just go through the rest of these beads. And then we'll snug it up and go through the bottom bead and put your diamond on there. And that's it. That's it for my corgi stories. Oh, I have more. I have more that I've told in other videos, and if you want to hear more, let me know because they're pretty funny. But uh, if you've heard them already, then not so funny. <laughs> then I sound like an old person. Oh wait, I am. Um, that doesn't even look in focus. I am sorry. There you go. So there is. This is how easy these are. And you know what? They're, I'm really amazed at how adorable they are. That. And what I did was, so I did the, the two diamonds on the end. And then I added six beads along with a closed jump ring on this side. You can use whatever clasp you want. And then I did... Here where I did the two diamonds you can do a third diamond I only thought of it after I got the first one on I was like well I'll just do it the same I added six beads here and you go through a couple of times I just went through twice on my thread um, I feel like it's probably good enough and I added this lovely heart clasp and oh my gosh so so sweet and it's it opens really well I got this on AliExpress. I think if you just put heart clasp, you'll be able to find it. Um, in looking at my how many I had, I probably have maybe 10 of them. 
So they were probably $3 for 10, which is about 30 cents each. But I'll tell you, they are a lot easier than lobster claws. Because you think a lobster claw is like that, right? But you have this big hook here. So it makes it easier to hook on to your stuff. And the mechanism is really good. Whatever the wire is they put in there is pretty easy to use. So that is a lovely bracelet. Thanks for hanging out with me. I have a whole bunch more to show you. Hopefully I can get through them today. And uh, hopefully you guys are doing well. It's raining here and we are waiting, like I said, to get hit by Fiona by Saturday. So, um, you know, the last time I had a, um, we had a hurricane, I did a video by candlelight and uh that was kind of funny but i think this time i'm gonna do some videos ahead of time <laughs> that was that was uh that was hard doing the uh video by candlelight <laughs> anyway take care everybody bye for now